Hello everybody, Poby here with another episode of Steins Gate Zero. And uh, last time we switched perspectives to Maho, and now we're talking to Karisu in the past. And it's pretty cool, uh, let's get going. Um, um, uh, are you meeting your dad in Japan? She'd heard that Karisu's parents weren't divorced, but that they were separated. Her mom was still in America, and her dad was in Japan. After Maho had said it, she'd wondered if that was too personal a question. But Karisu smiled a little. Actually, I got an invitation from him. Oh yeah? He's announcing a new theory this summer. I'm thinking of going to see the announcement. A new theory? Uh... Karisu's smile will change into a small expression of consternation? Uh... Forgive me for not knowing that word. I haven't heard the details yet. I know it's got something to do with the theory of relativity. Yeah? Maho felt like she was hiding something, but didn't question her anymore. Anyway, take care. I'll be expecting presents. What do you want? <laughs> hmm, since you're going to Akihabara, why not something rare? You know a lot about Akihabara, right? Huh? Why do you say that? You're always reading those sites during breaks. What? <laughs> uh, is talking about, um, uh, at, at channel? Theory of Relativity. The term Theory of Relativity refers to two theories published by Einstein. Special Theory, published in 1905, and the General Theory in 1916. These are the source of the famous equation E equals mc squared. Special Relativity makes clear... Make, makes clears up the following? Ooh, is that a typo? Um, makes clears up the following. Matter cannot exceed the speed of light. The closer you get to the speed of light, the slower time gets. If you reach the speed of light, time stops. The closer you get to the speed of light, the more your length decreases. If you reach the speed of light, your length becomes zero. The closer matter gets to the speed of light, the more its mass increases. If it were to reach the speed of light, its mass would become infinite. General relativity adds the following. Time slows down in the presence of a strong gravity field. Space compresses in the presence of a strong gravity field. Mass increases in the presence of a strong gravity field. Ooh. Science. Uh, did Amadeus tell you that? She wouldn't do that. Sometimes I'm right behind you and you're so busy watching videos you don't even notice. Ah, I can't believe you found out. Damn my carelessness. Kirisu actually seemed upset for once. This really surprised Maho. Doll. Maho, please don't tell the others. I don't think it's really something you need to hide, but... The idea of sharing a secret with Kirisu made Maho happy. Got it. I won't tell anyone. Thanks so much. Trisu seemed genuinely relieved. Maho continued. Hey. Once you get back from Japan, let's find out if Amadeus can talk to herself. Okay. Trisu had a very happy look on her face. It was the face of a born scientist who loved to explore the unknown more than anything in the world. Her smile wasn't as innocent as that of a child who'd just been given a new toy. It was very beautiful. And it was one of the reasons that Maho liked the younger researcher quite a bit. But the promise the two of them made would never be fulfilled. In fact, they would never even meet again. Oof. Oh, I'm still Maha. Or, no, I'm not. Uh, no, I keep speaking too soon. 
It felt like she was thinking about Krisu more and more since she'd come to Japan. I mean, obviously. Maho didn't know if it was because she was in Japan or because she was talking with the Amadeus Krisu more often. Probably both. Or maybe it was because she'd met the young man named Ritaro Okabe. Probably that too. He knows things about Krisu that I don't, huh? Yeah. Thinking back, the first day they'd met, she'd broken down and cried right in front of him. It was something she didn't really want to remember. She chased the memories away out of embarrassment. You were thinking of Okabe, weren't you? Hmm? She snapped her head toward the PC monitor. Oh, uh, uh. No, no way, Baka. <laughs> Maho is in the middle of a conversation with Kurisu. Yeah, that's right. She shrugged her shoulders and tried to ignore Kurisu's mischievous smile. Don't you think it's strange that Dr. Luskinen's got such a high opinion of him? He handed over your access rights to a guy he'd only met, met twice. Is it really wise to trust him so much? He looked like a ni nice person. Yeah, I can't tell if he's got any ambitions or not. I feel like I don't really understand him. Do you like him? Would you cut it out? Maho brought her face close to the monitor and glared. Urgh! But Grisu seemed unconcerned. There's no real need to hide it, is there? I can understand why you didn't want to say anything yesterday when he was right in front of you, but now it's just the two of us. Trisu may not have looked like someone who would, but she really enjoyed this sort of gossip. Maybe girl talk was the right word. Maho sighed and sat back in her chair. The creaking sound echoed throughout the empty office. I really don't feel that way about him. I still don't even really know who he is. I see. Well, that makes sense. Kurisu let the matter drop. This bothered Maho a little. But what does interest me? What is it? No, it's nothing. You can't just say that. Maho had been spending a lot of time thinking about something since yesterday. To the point where she'd even put off her research. What kind of relationship was there between Kurisu and Okabe? What was Kurisu feeling in the days before she died? She would have liked to ask Okabe if she could. You, you can. I guess you can. Maho, did my original and Okabe know each other? Maho shivered. It was as if Kurisu had been reading her mind. How could you tell? I came to that conclusion after listening to Okabe and hearing your response. It's all just circumstantial evidence, but do you want me to show my proof anyway? It's fine, knowing you, this conclusion is perfect. The way they used words like proof and normal conversation showed that both Maho and Kurisu were scientists at heart. If he has memories of me that I don't possess, that's likely to cause problems with our conversations. I'll leave it up to you to... up to you how to deal with it. He may bring it up, possibly, and if you want, you can ask him. Maho still didn't know if Okabe would even access Amadeus at all. They weren't forcing him to. Hmm, <laughs> feigning ignorance is the same as lying, isn't it? I should be able to get some good data, I think. Yes, it was interesting. But that was her opinion as a researcher working on Amadeus. How would Rintaro Okabe feel about it? Wouldn't this be rubbing salt on the wounds in his heart? Maho realized she was getting much too sentimental. Maybe it's because I'm in Japan. It'd been a week since she arrived. The main thing she planned to do was offer flowers. But she still couldn't bring herself to visit the Ak Akihabara radio building, the place where Kurisu had died. What the? Wait, we're switching perspectives again? 
Who the heck was that person? Wait, did I know that person? Am I dumb? The sun was setting earlier, now that December had arrived. Katsumi Nakase was surprised by how quickly it had gotten dark while she was rummaging through the cosplay shops. Uh, I feel so bad I cannot remember if this is a character I know or not. In Steins Gate, we only ever controlled Rintaro, right? I cannot remember. I don't- yeah, I don't think we ever switched perspectives. Like, ever. I don't know. Leave a comment down below if- if you- if you know. And also telling me I'm stupid for not knowing who this character is. The wheeled suitcase on the ground next to her felt heavy. She'd done her best to jam everything she'd brought today inside, and it was bursting at the seams. Still, spending a whole day shopping with her cosplay friends was a lot more- a lot of fun. She felt tired, but it was a good tired. Yeah. Her footsteps were light as she walked back to the station. Oh, um... I feel really bad that I don't know who this is. Fubuki, you look like you're about to start skipping around, don't you? Um... Oh, you can tell? It was so much fun doing all that shopping today. I'm so satisfied with what we got. Mayushi had a lot of fun shopping too. Thanks to Fubuki, thanks for coming. I'll do anything for you, Mayushi. Fubuki tried to grab her friend Mayuri Shina for a hug. Mayuri dodged out of the way. Mayuri may have looked like an airhead. She was actually quite athletic. Fubuki, by the way, was Katsumi... Nakase's cosplay name. Yeah, I'm, I'm so... I'm so certain I've never met this person. Um, but like then again, the more like I get certain, I'm the kind of person where I can never be 100% sure of anything. So like the more I think about it, the more I'm like, yeah, I don't know this person. Yeah, I think I know this person. Katsumi was in her second year of high school. She and Mayuri were the same age, but were total opposites. Katsumi was boyish and athletic, and when she cosplayed as a male character, she attracted more female Kameko than male ones. Uh, whoa. New character- what? Whoa. Like, the last game didn't have, like, a lot of characters. And they were, like... I mean, like, they were all girls, but this is probably gonna be mostly girls, too. Like, I'm surprised so many- we're meeting so many new people. Uh... So, if we're just- are we just gonna get to know this whole new group? This is pretty exciting. Um... But anyways, I don't want to get too far into this. I think I'm gonna end this episode off. It's kinda short. But I'm gonna end this episode off here. So, thank you very much for watching. I've been Pokey. And I will see y'all next time when we meet these new characters. Bye.